Well, by now, it's pretty obvious that I'm a huge fan of history. And that really came from a young age. My dad was always a fan of the history of space travel. So from really small, I was learning about the Gemini missions and Mercury and Apollo and stuff like that. Well, today, I'm really going to get an education. Oh, and there's some construction going on here at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. So we're going to get inside where it's not so noisy and uh, see what they've got. Okay, well I just walked in here to the Air and Space Museum and we aren't wasting any time going right to a lunar module from the Apollo space missions. We'll go learn a little bit more about this one. Just read that this lunar module here was, was more of a trainer. It never actually went into orbit or went to the moon. Uh, but it was used by the astronauts to kind of test the, the durability of it. Pretty neat. Touch a piece of the moon. I've never touched a piece of the moon, so I think I will. That right there is a V-1 rocket from World War II. Uh, during World War II, Nazi Germany really had the jump on everybody as far as rocket technology. These were nicknamed buzz bombs. And then later, they developed the V-2 rocket, which you can see here on the left. Uh, after World War II, the uh, U.S. launched something called Operation Paperclip, where we went and basically tried to round up all of these Nazi rocket scientists and German rocket scientists and bring them to the United States to work on the U.S. rocket program and the space program. Chief among them, Werner von Braun. So in uh, February of 1962, uh, NASA astronaut John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth, and he did it in this spacecraft right here. This is Mercury Friendship 7. And man, that thing is tiny. Okay, so after the Mercury program, uh, the U.S. launched the Gemini space program. So the Mercury capsule, you'll notice, only has one seat, whereas Gemini, you might be able to see in there, has, has two seats. Uh, this is Gemini 4 right here, which is kind of hard to see from the glare, but uh, this is where Ed White became the first American to walk in space from this capsule right here. Wow, such cool history. This is pretty interesting. This is a Soviet cosmonaut flight suit. Notice it's not pressurized like the American ones. Uh, this is just a two-piece wool suit. They didn't want to wear the uh, the bulky pressure suits. Would have been bad if the cabin would have depressurized though. And it also came uh, with this little survival knife in case they landed in a wild area in the Soviet Union. Interesting. This is pretty neat. This is on loan from a museum in Russia. This is a uh, the suit of a Soviet cosmonaut by the name of Alexei Leonov, who was the first one to have a manned space flight. Interesting. Now this is kind of interesting. This is a uh, Soviet moon suit. Of course the US and the Soviets were in a race to get to the moon. Uh, the Soviets kind of faltered at the end and never made it, but uh, this is the suit that they would have worn had they made it to the moon. That is interesting. And look at the shade. 
that is being cast by the Smithsonian, all dressed up but no way to go. Might be a little bit hard to see from the glare, but this is the back end of that Soviet moon suit. Literally had a like a big door for a backpack that would open up and then you would uh, just step inside there. Kind of hard to see from the glare, but yeah. There, you can probably see it a little bit better now. You just step right into that thing. And here are the models for the vehicles that uh, either took us to space or were designed to take us to, spa to space. Over here on the left, this is the Saturn V, which most Americans familiar with the space program know of. Uh, and then this over here, this was the Soviet design. This was called the N1. And, of course, it never made it. Here is the spacesuit that was worn by David Scott in 1971 on the Apollo 15 mission and still has moon dust on it. That's pretty cool. So uh, this is, wow, <laughs> right next to the bathroom so I'm going to be getting a lot of noise from the uh, dryers but this is a display of some of the things that went to the moon on the Apollo 11 mission. So I'll just kind of walk through them. This is an exerciser right here. This is a med kit and Neil Armstrong's chronograph, as well as uh, Michael Collins's sunglasses. So the crew members were Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Don't hear as much about Collins because he didn't actually walk on the moon. This is the operations checklist for Apollo 11 and one of their meals, which I guess didn't get eight. <laughs> and then they even got Michael Collins' toothbrush. That's kind of funny. Look at here. We got some pineapple fruit cake. That looks awful. Okay, now this isn't from Apollo 11, this is from 12 and 16, but this is the lunar sample return container. So this is where they would put samples from the moon to bring back. And uh, it's a little soil sampler right there. Interesting. This is pretty crazy. So after Neil Armstrong died, his family discovered this white cloth bag in a closet and found space contents inside of it. Uh, sent it to NASA sent them pictures and uh, they realized that it was stuff that had gone to the moon on the lunar module Eagle including this uh, data acquisition camera and just a few, to few tools like this wrench and a waist tether and it was just sitting in his closet that entire time. Wow. And look at this. Does it get any cooler than Neil Armstrong's spacesuit? Lots of people here, obviously. That is simply amazing. Well, that is probably the most impressive collection of space history that I've ever seen. Um, Neil Armstrong's suit. It definitely is the uh, the prize piece in here. Um, now, there's other things here in the museum about the history of flight, things from the Wright brothers and Charles Lindbergh, um, but we're gonna save that for the next video. Lots of cool stuff here though. This kid just completely butted in front of me. Oh, okay, I guess I'm just invisible here. <laughs>